back again, head is steady working, which is geothermal power station in Iceland, and we're going to talk about energy resources. Guerrilla physics here in Iceland. <laughs> so I do have another video, I was here a few years ago, and I explained how the geothermal power station works, um, so I'll link that up at some point, um, but this time we're going to talk about difficult questions they're going to ask you in your GCC about evaluating energy resources. It's not enough just to know some kind of set advantages and disadvantages of power stations, you have to be able to make comparisons and make judgments about the reasons for those choices people make about generating electricity. So I was here uh, a few years ago and well you couldn't see the volcano then and you can't see the volcano today. I was hoping you could see Mount Hengill but it's exactly the same situation, it's just not covered in snow. Questions like, what's an advantage of geothermal power station? It's renewable, is not really going to get you much in the new GCSEs, the 9 to 1 GCSEs. So you need to have a bit of a deeper understanding about the choices that we're going to make, that we make about our energy resources. And understanding something like this, that I'm going to talk about in this video, is going to help you do that. First point of call, first thing to think about when you're asked a question about evaluating energy resources, is you look at the context. Look at the context, okay? Because the advantage of one thing is not necessarily going to meet, be an advantage in another context. All right, I hope that makes sense. Today is context of Iceland. Iceland, for its electricity, uses 99% renewable resources. So I don't want to talk about all the rest. I want to talk about the 1%. 30% of electricity from geothermal power stations like this, but the majority, about 69%, 70%, like if you round it up, is... Um, actually hydro and they kind of hide their hydro plants in the mountains but that is making a lot of the electricity for Iceland. What about the one percent? Well we've visited some pretty remote places now if you are one house in the middle of nowhere then it is not worth connecting you to the main grid. Even in Iceland where we've got that abundance of the renewable energy resources then it is still going to be if you're a remote place it's still going to be better to use a diesel generator to make your electricity so why, why is that well because it would cost too much it would be too many resources to build the power lines to get there is the fact that it's renewable a advantage to them well it might be and they may have some small scale renewable stuff as well but they're still going to need to use a diesel generator as a backup for when the renewables not being very reliable, not being able to produce 24-7 reliable electricity, they're going to need to switch that diesel generator on as a backup so they aren't without electricity during those times. Being renewable is not going to be an advantage in that particular context. Some other things about energy in Iceland. Basically, energy use in Iceland is all renewable apart from boats, cars and planes are the only real consumers of fossil fuels in Iceland, apart from that 1% that we've just discussed. This power station is not making a lot of electricity at the minute, okay, if it was it would be a lot louder. The turbine halls just this side um, are actually not really producing a vast amount of electricity because this is more of a tourist attraction so they don't want it to be too loud. What they are doing is sending a lot of hot water to Reykjavik. Now 99% of houses in Reykjavik are actually all heated with geothermal energy. And what this means, I'm going to go inside because it's raining, what this means really is that the electricity and heat bills are incredibly low. Our bus driver said that combined electricity and heat bill was 35 pounds per month equivalent. Ask your parents, that's cheap. These turbine balls just here. So the fact that it's renewable, a geothermal does not have the advantages that it has in Britain because we don't have access to that geothermal fluid underground that they do here in Iceland. But we do, in Scotland, we do have a vast amount of hydroelectricity. So that's, that's uh, something to remember. It is not other countries that use renewables. And in Britain, we are working towards having a higher percentage of renewable electricity generation. They're working on a system of carbon fixing in this power station, which is really useful. And because there's basalt rocks, Essentially they can dissolve carbon dioxide and dissolve sulfur dioxide into the water that they return back into the ground. Just in a couple of years it will crystallise and that carbon and that sulfur will be locked down out of the atmosphere. So it's a way in fact that we can actually remove carbon and sulfur emissions causing global warming and causing acid rain from the atmosphere. And the last thing to talk about is demand and well all of these things change by economic pressures the reason why they are not pumping their maximum capacity to Reykjavik all the time through those pipelines that you can see over there is because of demand and that's something they're going to get into those tricky exam questions to really test out your understanding and your ability to evaluate energy resources